In this video, we'll look at Lewis structures for molecules that can have expanded octets. So the first thing we need to know is which elements can have expanded octets. Let's go to the periodic table here. So when we talk about Lewis structures for expanded octets, we're going down one, two, three. This is the third period on the periodic table. So elements in the third period and below, and mainly we're looking over here, they can have expanded octets. And that's because they have d orbitals. So there's some electrons in the d orbitals that are available for bonding that allows us to have expanded octets. The two you really want to watch out for, phosphorus and sulfur. We'll see these quite often in chemistry. So let's take a look at an example. Let's take a look at the sulfate ion. So if we drew a Lewis structure for the sulfate ion, SO4, 2 minus, we followed all the rules for writing Lewis structures, we'd come up with this. We've used all the valence electrons, each oxygen that has an octet, sulfur, it has an octet. This looks like a pretty good Lewis structure. But since we have the sulfur, we should check the formal charges. That's the tool that we're going to use to figure out if we need an expanded octet. So whenever I see sulfur, I start thinking about formal charges. I know from experience that whenever you have oxygen here and it has a single bond, it's going to have a formal charge of minus one. So all oxygens here will be minus one. And since all of this needs to add up to the charge on the ion, the two minus the sulfur, that'll be two plus. If you need help calculating formal charges, there's a link in the description of this video and at the end to help you. So we look at our formal charges here. We'd like them to be as close to zero as possible while still matching the charge on the ion. And I know a double bonded oxygen will have a formal charge of zero. So I'm going to move these two here to the center, and let's move these to the center. Then we'll end up with this. So because these formal charges, now these are all zero, we still have a minus one and a minus one, but that's okay. They need to match. This is a much more favorable or likely or better Lewis structure for SO4 2 minus. So when we think about Lewis structures and expanded octets, formal charges, they allow us to figure out, do we need to have an expanded octet? In some cases, we will. When you see things like sulfur and phosphorus, it's a good idea to check. Sometimes you'll see structures where you know you have to have an expanded octet. For example, if you had phosphorus pentachloride, that's going to have to have an expanded octet because you're going to need more than four bonds. So you'll have at least 10 valence electrons around the phosphorus. Something like SF6, you know you have an expanded octet. But in the cases you're not sure, formal charges can help you figure out whether you need to have that expanded octet or not in your Lewis structure. This is Dr. B talking about expanded octets and Lewis structures. Thanks for watching.